Hey guys, I'm Jacob. You're watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. This is going to be one of my motorcycle videos. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Icon Airframe Pro Construct. Um, I've had this helmet for about six months tops. A lot of that time it was just sitting in the box brand new waiting to be used. I've rode with this helmet about a thousand miles, not a whole lot. Uh, for me, this would actually be essentially a brand new helmet. And so we're gonna do two things here. First, I wanna talk about my overall impressions of it so far, kind of the build quality. Uh, and then, since I have a defective helmet, I also want to talk about the return process, the warranty process, and about Revzilla the company that I bought it from, which by the way, Revzilla is a sister company to Cycle Gear. So they're basically the same thing and a lot of times on their websites, you'll see the exact same products and stock listed. They're the same thing. All right, so uh, you've got a chin vent here, a top vent here, vents up here. They say that this is designed to flow maximum air into the helmet in a leaned over attack position. Uh, it's just marketing crap. Uh, they just want it to look cool, but this helmet flows best sitting straight up, looking straight on into the wind, just like every other helmet. Um, initially, when I got this helmet, it was super, super tight on my cheeks. And the reason that I got this helmet is because um, it came in a long oval head shape, very hard head shape to find. I probably don't need that. I can probably do intermediate oval like 99% of helmets are, but I wanted to try long oval. So when I originally, the uh, you've got some cool details here. You know, the aluminum clasps here are a nice little touch, came in a nice little bag and stuff. Uh, and the, Inserts come out fairly easily, which is a positive and a negative for cleaning. Uh, and after about a thousand miles, the helmet has broken in significantly. So I would expect a helmet that is way too tight when you first put it on to become comfortable once broken in and then to not digress further than that. This went from way too tight to almost being loose. I think the padding just degraded quite quickly. And the way that it's installed, no snaps, no Velcro, it just slides in here. So a lot of times I'd take my helmet off and this would just come out. I'm like, that's freaking weak. This is like a doggone brand new helmet and it's just chintzy. The bottom thing, it, it just slides in there. There's, there's really no nothing to make this snap or anything that makes sense like that. You just force it in and it goes in, that's that. Uh, so pretty crappy. I noticed the vents feel super chintzy. Um, I would find them to be, especially the chin vent would move unexpectedly. I would just realize I was getting a little bit stuffy and feel it and oh, it's closed again. What the crap? This uh, super thin material on this vent here likes to catch anything, your gloves or anything else. It'll get caught and get pulled on. I'm sure it would break uh, before too long. Um, and if you'll notice here, this inner seal is actually coming off on this side as well. That's awesome. So originally it was just coming off on this side. You look here. This is obviously supposed to be fitted and glued right here and all the way around. So if you look at this helmet, you'll notice that there's a very large difference between how this fits across the top here. It's all, and the whole, all of this seal is coming off. So no, nothing crazy has happened to this helmet. No heat, no crash, no, I say no heat, no, I don't know, it's not melted. Um, I don't, it's hot in Kentucky, but you know, nothing. 
and I ride a thousand miles, the entire seal's falling apart. I noticed because I was riding and a bunch of wind was coming up across my right eye and like circulating around my right eye. I was like, what's going on here? Like my eyelids are like fluttering, Ugh, trying to ride. And yeah, sure enough, I take it off and I look at it. And the first thing that I noticed is it was sagging here and this seal is completely rolled and the whole thing's coming off. As it turns out, the whole thing is coming off all the way around. When this first came off, I thought, maybe I can just pull this back and hold it in place and re-glue it. Uh, and it was so stiff, that, and it still is, that it won't even move there. I think what they did is, this is a large helmet, I think they used a seal from a medium helmet. I think that's what they did. Return process with Revzilla, okay? So I have to pay for my own shipping to return this helmet to Revzilla. Then either an Icon person there will inspect it or they have to ship it to Icon to inspect it. Not really clear on that, but Icon has to inspect it. And even though they already told me, yes, this is a warranty issue, they have to confirm, Icon has to confirm that it's a warranty issue. And then once it's confirmed, I get Zilla cash to buy another helmet. And basically, uh, I, I realized on Facebook that some people think that this is normal or acceptable. Um, you're old. It's not. That's not how this works. Uh, I know that like Biltwell has a reputation for immediately sending re uh, warranty replacement products. If you can show a picture and it's clearly defective, uh, you have to support your clientele here. And what this means is I will be without a helmet to ride my motorcycle for at least two weeks. That's not how you make repeat customers. Um, that's not how you support your industry, either for Revzilla or Icon. So if Icon's gonna suck this bad with their warranty process, Revzilla needs to be like, hey guys, your stuff sucks. So either we're gonna do it differently or we're not gonna carry your products anymore or you're gonna do it differently for everybody because that's bull crap, right? It's not freaking 1990 anymore. This is the era of freaking Amazon two days shipping and actually taking care of your customers, especially when it comes to hobbyists, because people like me don't want to be out of a helmet for two weeks to a month in the middle of prime riding season. So if you look for public opinion on Icon, you'll see a few people saying they've been wearing an Icon helmet for eight years or 20 years or 97 years and never had a problem. You'll see that with anything. But in general, what you will see is people saying, Icon sucks, don't buy Icon. What I have here is a fancy looking $150 helmet that I paid $400 for, and now I'm suffering the consequences. I will never buy from Icon again. And I'll, I don't have any place where I can easily get a helmet locally, but I'll try. I'll try, I don't think, I'll do my best to not shop at Revzilla ever again because this process sucks. It is antiquated, it is disrespectful to the community that they're uh, wanting to look like they serve, right? It's just trash, it's just old school trash. It's freaking 2021, you're running one of the largest online retailers for motorcycle gear. And if you don't want to lose all of your business to Amazon, then you better get with the times because this is garbage. Uh, that's about all I got. I will not be getting another icon, obviously. I'll let you guys know what I do do. I might ride a considerable way with my sunglasses uh, to another to a, a motorcycle shop and hope that they have an affordable helmet to fit me. And I might get a cheapie for uh, the time being because I don't want to be out of my bike for a long time. Haven't made up my mind yet, uh, but that's all I got. Uh, again, you can support this channel by checking out the description box below. Uh, my website, Beach and Tactical, Exodus Knife and Tool, my Patreon, my affiliate links, and my social media 
links. If you are interested more in motorcycles and mountain bikes than what I typically do on Instagram, you can follow me at Jake's Two Wheeled Adventures. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Let Revzilla and Icon know what you think on social media. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a blessed day.